What's going on, guys? Welcome to the David F. Haas podcast, episode 129, I believe, in the podcast studio with the famous Brie Haas tattoos. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, um, I thought it would be cool to have Brie, who's my wife, if you didn't know, if you're just listening for the first time. They better know. You better they, talk they better. about me a lot. Yeah, I do. I talk about you a lot on this podcast about all the problems that you have. <laughs> um but no, I thought it would be cool to to get you on here and maybe we could just do like a life check-in because Brie and I have some pretty interesting conversations. We, we You can listen to Brie's original podcast where we talk a lot about her business and how she built like this amazing business where she has like essentially unlimited demand for her services. Um, if you want the that aspect of, of Brie Haas. <laughs> you uh, don't. But this podcast is going to be more about um, some of the conversations I think that you and I have, like behind closed doors, not like behind closed doors, but like, God. you know, this is about life in general. And then maybe potentially how we're, how we're kind of managing a life as two entrepreneurs with two kids, um, just like busy lives, essentially. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Sounds good. <laughs> um, so yeah, we share, we share a workspace. We work together. We live together. We have two kids together. Um, we basically do everything together. But we, we 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 have found that marriage is easy. Yeah. Yep. I don't understand this marriage is hard thing, but I think it's lazy. Why the scene in the notebook where he's like, "It's going to be hard." It's like the worst thing that could have happened in like society. <laughs> I think that's like where things went terrible. Oh, oh no, it's okay. Sorry. Bree's also my interior decorator, so she's the one responsible for this. Uh, she comes up with all the visions, and I have to do all the work. Yeah, yeah. Um, but l let's let's talk about that a little bit, since I have to lead the conversation. Yeah, here. please. Yeah. No. Uh, um, is what do you think uh, makes our, our marriage essentially easy? And you know, like sh doesn't mean that we don't have tough times and stuff, but we don't really fight that much. No. Um, and we have fun together and we get along. But what do you, what do you think it is? Like, mean, why? I think because we just take each other for what we are. Like, you don't, we don't try and change each other. Like, yeah, I don't try and make you be this, like, like, I'm not forcing you to dance at a wedding. That would be like the example that I give. Like, you're just not that guy. If I wanted to go to a wedding and be dancing the night away, which sounds like my nightmare, but if that's what I wanted to do, then like, I would just be like, this is not for Dave. This is not it. I don't know. And you don't expect me to be this jolly little elf all the time. <laughs> like I'm just am who I am. You don't try and change me. I'm an angry little Italian. And yeah. And I think <laughs> a lot of people. Like, oh, there's Brie doing Brie. Yeah. I and I think a lot of people like uh, kind of probably assume that like, um, because like, you know, my, my dedication is to spiritual growth and spiritual work. And I'm just kind of in the, the field of doing spiritual work and helping people and doing all they, they assume that you're like this Zen master <laughs> <laughs> because you're, you're, you're my wife. But I think, I think you probably hit the nail on the head there is that part of the reason that we do work is because we have, we have like no expectations of each other. We mm -hmm. kind of are both like have acceptance for who each other are. Yeah, and because of that acceptance, the we don't ever really build any resentment. You know, um, not that there isn't times where yeah, we might get pissed off at each other for something or whatever, but it's all so subtle. It seems like to me. Yeah. Well, good thing you don't get mad at me for being angry all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's I, mean, I think that's kind of like what what it is. Like I mean, I always give the example in my groups and stuff about. Um, I always tell the story, and I never, I don't think I ever told you, but you know the story. Um, where when we first kind of like, we kind of have an interesting love story also, by the way, we should probably talk about that. Um, we, I was, when I met Brie, I was 32 and she was 20, which is wild. <laughs> um, and so, but the crazy thing about Brie was that she was like this 20 year old, you know, good looking 20 year old girl. And, um, but wasn't like a oh, big partier, mm -hmm. she say, you know, you weren't like, your primary focus wasn't like going downtown and getting drunk every weekend. Right. I was the DD for all my friends. So when yeah. I would go out, we would hang back and actually talk while my friends were acting a fool. 
Yeah. And so then we met and like, we obviously, there's obviously, of course there's attraction. And so we have the attraction, but like literally within two weeks of us dating, we were like looking at condos together. Yeah. I know. Which is kind of like a sign of like, this is, this is a a point for you is that, uh, like, you know, there's soulmates. There's people that are meant to be together. I always try and convince Dave that we're soulmates and he doesn't believe me. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, you don't really like, well, it sounds like you're coming around to the idea, but you don't really believe in soulmates. Well, I I, know I do. I actually do believe that we, we make soul arrangements, um, in, in the spiritual, (laughs) in the spiritual realm, essentially. So we, we make contracts with people to come into our lives, to, help us transcend things that are limiting us most. And, you know, that's kind of like the reason we come to, we, we like, in, you know, incarnate into the human body is to, is to break free from karma that we've been holding on to for, you know, forever. Right. And but so, like, and so, but no, I do believe so that. <laughs> yeah. I, I do believe that there are people that are, um, they're more compatible and meant to be together. But you're like, if I die. You're like, keep on trucking. I'll find someone else. Well, that's mean, what he always. <laughs> uh, Maya's not, here, just so you know. So it's I'm not so much that it. as, it's not so much of if you die, keep on trucking. Of course, you're like, oh, I would. Of course, there'll be grief and there'll be sadness and find be someone open. else. But it's like, I. Just mm, say it. Well, no, I'm just trying to say it okay. the right way. It's like my, like, I would. If you died, my life wouldn't be over. Oh, I know. And that doesn't mean that as far as like, <laughs> this podcast is going a weird direction, but, but it's not so much about like, uh, the fact that, you know, but I think there's, there is this element of like, uh, putting too much of our, our ability to be loved into somebody else. Yes. And so if, if the only way I ever felt loved or was loved was with you, then that would be a problem. Mm-hmm. Right. And so if you did die at some point, I don't know why we're talking about this, but <laughs> you did die at some point. It's like one of the things that I would have to do is is grieve and and accept that that grief is there and, and deal with it. But then I would have to move on with my life or whatever shape or that, that would be. So it's like, I think it's an important it's thing. I, to, to, but I think but I think that's also a, a, a factor of what makes our relationship work is that we're not relying on each other for our own happiness. Well, yeah, that's true. Right. It's like that, that was deep. But like, pretty deep. But it, but here's the, the thing: people gotta know. In doing that, that is what makes us so close, mm-hmm. right? Because you don't need me to be or do anything in order for you to be happy. And now, well, I mean, your happiness needs work, but like, <laughs> but and the same thing for me, right? Now, <laughs> so we're just and, like poking at each other. And, and because <laughs> of that, though, we end up having a, a deeper connection, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, and and that's what I found with most things. It's like. No, uh, and actually Maya, who's here in the podcast room, I'll give her a shout out. Um, we, we were just we were just talking about is like that thing that you are so unwilling to let go of, um, because you think that if you let it go, you're not gonna get it. For example, like thinking that love is out there, mm-hmm. like in a partner even. Uh you and you and you're just searching and striving and trying to make your relationship work and doing all those things because you think that love is there. And then you can't stop all of those behaviors because if you do, you won't be loved. Yeah. Right? But it's like when you let go of the needing of love out there, that's when the love out there comes flowing into your life. And we are, uh, that was definitely like an unintentional, like result of who we've become essentially. And I also think that the whole, like this person completes me. I don't think it, I think we complement each other. We don't complete each other. We're both like, 100% ourselves without each other and then our personalities complement each other yeah I'd say yeah and I think there's other things that like we have similar interests we're both vegetarian we've both been vegetarian ever since we met um, yeah everyone thinks I converted him that's not true no he was one before I was I was veg met. long long before yeah. I met Brie um, but yeah so I think there are like we're, there, there are commonalities um, but that, that kind of takes me into like what I, w- I wanted to talk a little bit about because part of the the conversations that Brie and I have had are like one of the big ones we have a lot is like, what are we doing? Uh, <laughs> Essentially, yeah. like, because when you get to a level of like all of your needs are met, right? And so like Brie and I make like decent money. We're not like rich by any means, but we, 
we make good, like we, we get, we can do whatever we want. Mm -hmm. Essentially, we can go on vacations. We're not flying on private jets or first class or anything like that, but like we go to Florida every year, every year for a month, you know, uh, we, if our friends say, Hey, we're getting married in Mexico, we, we can go like, we, we don't really have to like save up for anything. If there's anything that we want, we buy it essentially. Right. And so the, I'm not saying that to like to brag, but what I'm saying is once you kind of meet all of your materialistic needs, you get to this very strange spot. And Brie and I have had multiple conversations about this where like if Brie and I tomorrow started making an extra hundred thousand dollars a year, it wouldn't change our life one. No. Day, right. If we made an extra 200, 300, we're, we're just like, the question we kind of say is like, what is the point in life? Where we're like, what are we doing? Yeah. Just eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It stresses me right, out. Right, right. Well, and, and, and so. <laughs> it's the craziest uh, thing. I'm like, does it matter how, like how much money you make? We just got to wake up, eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then go to bed. And like, maybe the more money you make, you do cooler shit in between. But like, it's all like the human experience. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. And I think that's what, I think that's what this, this all comes to is that, and then, so the, the point of contention that Brian and I have is that, you know, for me, I know that there are greater states of consciousness because I've experienced them and, and, and you have too, but you know, because my intention is to move towards those, right. I know that there are like more, there's so much more to life than making money and all of that kind of stuff and exp even experiencing, right. Yeah. Like there's but, so much more to life than experiencing. And you and I have actually stepped out of that. Like, we really don't have a desire to like vacation. Yeah. Like we like it like when we go, but it's like, not like it's like, it is everything that we're living for. Right. And so when you, you have the travel bug, no, definitely not. And so when you, when you get to that level in life, you start to say, should I keep pushing? You know, should I keep yeah. trying to move life to this next level? Because they're really probably not until like, you know, you're probably, I think I would say, Probably life doesn't really change until you start making like a million bucks a year. And how does it change? It doesn't change that much. You eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, it kind of doesn't really even change. So then you start questioning. <laughs> so you start stepping out of this like it capitalistic. Makes you have no motivation. Right. Like I'm like, yes. what the fuck? Yeah. And even last night we we're watching this. What was that? Civil movie? War. We watched that Civil War movie that you told us to watch. And. I had this whole crisis because these people thought they were doing something so important and nothing in life matters. I'm sorry. That's so dark. But we like had this whole thing where I'm like, if fucking Edison, did Edison invite, invent the light bulb? Or is yeah. He, yeah. Or Edison or, yeah. Yeah. yeah Edison. 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 If yeah. he didn't invent the light bulb, fucking someone else would have 10 years later. Like, it's like, it's not like nothing's that important. Like, yeah. But the we only have, thing that the only thing Sorry. that I do find like that that has that level of importance though is raising kids. So right, but yeah. like because every <laughs> everything that you do in life isn't gonna matter. Like nothing matters. Yeah. Like you could invent the craziest thing and then you're gonna die and no one cares. Like I right. fucking turn on lights every day. I'm not like oh. But the people that Edison do care that. though, like would be your kids though, right? <laughs> and so <laughs> yeah, but I do believe, and that's why I like I was like you know. I mean, I always wanted kids, but, and I had friends that had kids, like all my friends had kids before me and I didn't really get it until I had kids. And I was like, oh, yeah. like, this is what life is all about. Like, this is, this is it. Like the, the love that you have for like a kid is like, it's just unbelievable. Right. Even though it's right. super tough and we're in like a tough zone. Right but now. then if they don't have kids and it just stops there, then we just did this thing and then in a hundred well, no, years it doesn't matter. But no, that's but it mattered to it. them though. Matter to them, yeah. Yeah, like in, like a lot. Yeah, but that's and the it matter thing does. I care about is like the relationships in our close circle. I don't care about changing the world or no, anything no. because I just don't think that matters. Even like who like the <laughs> Roman Empire person, like I don't even know who the fuck that was. And he was like the pinnacle of that time yeah. in the world. And like a couple thousand years later, I'm like, what was his name? Caesar? Like, who cares? Like, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it only matters making a difference to your close people. Like, I don't care about changing the world because that shit doesn't matter. Like no. Dave has a friend that is like very passionate about like leaving his mark on the world. Like he wants to like invent something big or do something. And I'm like, that's all cool. 
but it doesn't fucking matter because if you don't invent it, someone else is going to, or even if you do, someone's going to come up with something better. Like it doesn't like all that matters is like your family and friends. And like, to me, I'd rather like make a change in our little world, which is like Harlow echo, like our immediate family, than like some minute change in the real world is kind of how I feel. Yeah. And I think when you start to lean into the (laughs) fact that like, like we are pretty insignificant, like in the history of like, speck of dust. Yeah, crazy. speck of dust. And, you know, Float. one of the things I walk people through is to, to get them connected to how gigantic the universe is. And so when they when they get this to understand that, which you, you can't even really wrap your mind around how big the universe actually do is. Do your thing. Do that thing. Or you know. it goes like, <laughs> what what's the what's the speed of light? Oh, I don't know. You don't know, but it's like really fast. It's like, and I, I think I even got this number wrong. <laughs> I think I even got this number wrong, but I think it's like, I think it's like 300,000 kilometers per Has second. Has ever done this to you? What? Okay. Do the thing. Okay. So it's Zach and, and Meyer. So like, what's the speed of light? You don't know, 300,000 kilometers. I think it's, you got it, Zach? Three, 300 million meters per second. 300, it's even, yeah, it's even faster than that. So 300 million meters. No, that's right. It is 300,000. Yeah, I was right. So 300,000 <laughs> kilometers per second. Okay. So knowing that, so just imagine how fast that is. In one second, you travel 300,000 kilometers, which is like, I don't know, around the earth or 10 times or something. So know, with that knowledge, how long does it take a ray of light to get from the sun to earth? Going that fast. How long? No, it takes 300,000. So... Yeah, so how fast? Any idea? It takes eight minutes, right? So just to give you an idea how far the sun is from the earth, okay? That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's crazy. So it's like even hard to wrap your mind around that distance, right? So then, you know, like our galaxy, the Milky Way, like if you're up north somewhere, you can look in our galaxy and you look up and you see all the stars that are in our galaxy. It's just wild, right? If you were to get on a light speed motorcycle going 300,000 kilometers per second how long would it take you to drive across our our galaxy 10 years take you a hundred thousand years isn't that fuck now to get even to get even, to get even cra- uh, no to get even crazier <laughs> to get even crazier is that no way when it they this is back be, when i mean i used to tell this thing when they put up when I, when I was just talking about hubble but now they have even a bigger telescope so when they got Hubble up the, out there and they got it outside of our solar system, they could see how many other galaxies there were. And scientists estimate that there are over 200 billion galaxies. Is that the craziest thing you've ever right? heard? And we're here on Earth. <laughs> Thinking our problems matter. <laughs> are you shitting me? <laughs> I'm out here fucking right. wondering what to eat for dinner. No, I hate it. Right. And so oh the, the purpose... God. The purpose of that whole thing is to recognize that that we are not important. And, it, and that, that's like a really weird spiritual concept that we are yeah. not important. But it also, in some ways, does... Uh, it's like freeing. It is. Knowing yes. that, like, whatever, this doesn't matter. But then also, you're like, okay, fuck, now what? But what I'm trying to get to, know, to you okay, is that it does matter because when you experience... <laughs> When you, in, but you had, in for Brie, like the thing, uh, the thing, the other reason that Brie and I work is because Brie is insanely connected because she doesn't hold on to very many things. Like mm-hmm. she's like, just kind of speaks her truth and like at all times. She doesn't, she doesn't, uh, she doesn't people please. She doesn't, you know, she doesn't have a filter, you know, like, and so <laughs> she just says what's on her mind. But because of that, she doesn't harbor resentments, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. like, even in, if we yeah, get in fights, she's always says like, oh, you'll know if I'm mad or whatever. And, and it's true. She will <laughs> let me know. Right. And, but because of that, it doesn't keep her mind clouded with all of these, I should have said that, or I, I, you know, all of these regrets and all of this type of thing. And so because of that, you're, you're connected. And so even though you're not really fully connected to the idea of like, uh, you know, why, why is this important? And in some ways you're like a little bit deterred by the fact that it's not important right at the same time you are connected to the fact that it is important because within our circle like you talk about our little our dogs our kids uh you and i our friends our family it's like super important yeah and that's what life's all about and and learning how to take that love right 
that we ex have for our family and our yeah. circle and expand it to every single person that we come in contact with. See that? You lose me. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> you lose me. I'm like, I'll just keep it here and... Right. But when that's you it. learn how to spread that, like that's essentially what Jesus did. Mm, yeah. Okay. Sorry. And so when people were Sorry. in the field of Jesus, when he was radiating at level of consciousness 1000, all they had to do was step into his presence and they would heal. Right. And so like that, if you're in the state of unconditional love for um, 10 seconds, mm -hmm. it's like one of the most amazing feelings on earth right and right. so it's like i was talking to Maya about this so we had a retreat that she happened to walk in on like in the last minute and the, this guy was sharing that his sister who was at the retreat with him had shared this like something she had been holding on to her for for a really long time and she shared it with him and he was like so grateful that she had finally like let that go mm -hmm. and the whole room got like the the arms you were there too i think exactly everyone's hair stood up on their arms everyone got chills in their neck and because we were all feeling love Beyond the judgments, beyond mm -hmm. uh, oh, the 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 rationalizations and the justifications, it was just pure love, right. and everyone experienced it for like it was like it was so fleeting. It was like five seconds, but it was like, and I called it out at the retreat. I'm like, that is what life is all about. And so when you say, mm -hmm. "What is this all about?" I'm like, it's really about the expansion of that feeling and trying to stay for there longer. more, yeah. longer, and that goes so beyond like money. Yeah. yeah, making more money. And so, yeah, when we start asking these questions, because it's a funny place to be when all your financial needs are met. Yeah. Right. It's like, so you're like no. uh, yeah, because you could either stay in the rabbit wheel, the rabbit wheel, the hamster wheel. Can't be. Rabbit wheel. <laughs> <laughs> you stay in the hamster wheel and you keep spinning to try and keep fulfilling the next desire or you learn that you can step off. Right. right. And just watch everyone else spin around. On the mm -hmm. wheel, right. And so, yeah. So that's one of the, the, the deep conversations that you and I have a lot is like, what are we doing? But I think the thing that that's happened for me lately is like, I just have no need to be entertained anymore. Right. Like, I but you also enjoy a, like some material things. And I. Not, not even really so much. You like anymore. a fast car. Just I don't. I was actually just thinking about that car today in my <laughs> driveway, in my garage. Like every time I open my garage and I look at that car, I go, well, there's some money that could be invested in making me more money <laughs> you know? right? For, for me for doing nothing. Yeah. Which would, you know, the thing that I'm like more interested in now is like freedom, essentially. Mm -hmm. Right. And I already believe that I have a good amount of freedom. And I think that's what everyone's actually after. The reason you try and make money is to be free. Right. Right. And so freedom... Is not something that you get out there, mm -hmm. right? It's something that comes from within, right? Yeah. And the second you you fulfill a desire, right, the desire for that thing is gone. Yeah. And like, that's well, what happened to me with that car. Like that car <laughs> fucked me up. I knew that did. car was going to fuck It fucked me up too. because it was like, there was, was still like, get this- get the car, Dave. See there what was still happens. this lingering belief that, <laughs> I did. that that getting that car was going to change me. And because I <laughs> wanted it since I was a kid. And so. I was I, like, there, you're going to get it and be like, it's going to be the exact same as the way I perceive going on a jet ski. And when I, th I think jet skis are so <laughs> fucking stupid and people are like, why do you think jet skis are stupid? And I'm like, because you're just on it and you're like, yeah. I'm on a jet ski for like two seconds and then what? You, you're just like, okay, like it's over. And that one time we did that flyboarding, that was like. No, oh, that was stupid. It was yeah. so stupid. <laughs> it's like this thing where you like go up and they're like, do it, Bree. It's going to be so fun. I'm like, I bet it's going to be exactly what it is. And then right. I got up and I'm like, okay, <laughs> like right. got the gist of it. And then when I, when you got this car, I'm like, he's going to get the car and be like, yep, it's exactly like owning a car. Well, it's <laughs> cool. And then that's exactly yeah. what happened. But it's actually, it's actually <laughs> even worse than a car <laughs> because it's, it's, it's like, crazy. I almost feel guilty for not using it. Right? Yeah. It's like I paid all this money for this thing and then it sits in my garage. And, and I have to be careful. I'm like taking the bike in and out. And I'm like, this fucking car. Yeah. I'm almost it's scratch actually it every day. Burden. It's like a burden in my yeah. in my personal life. The thing that you <laughs> want most will end up being I'm the like, thing that burdens you most. Yeah. How wild is that? And like that's so true with like money and everything. You know, it's like it's like anything that you're looking for out there will end up in some ways like, you know, backfiring on you in some ways. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, that like, like it's like, even if you look at it, like the person who wants to be in love, like more than anything in the entire world, and then they finally get the love that they think they have, and then they hate their husband or wife or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, it's like, it's because you haven't solved for what's in there. And, uh, you know. I think that car was like the nail in your material shit doesn't was. matter coffin, which it you needed. It was, it was an expensive lesson to learn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he but needed interestingly it. And enough, I knew you needed it. So I was like, honestly. It must, I think it is a little bit more it. of like a male thing in some ways, but like you, you never had that though. No, I don't have a single thing yeah. outside of my like loved ones that I care about. Yeah. Like I don't care what car I drive. I don't care what restaurants we eat at. I don't care what house we live in. Right. I now here's another, yeah. So here's another question care. that Brie and I talk about a lot is, <laughs> Is like, are we lame? Like, are we boring? Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because no, like, I know. Oh, we, well, though, we did, we did, uh, we put our boat in the water the other day, which uh, we had a sailboat, we sold a sailboat, which mm -hmm. I regret, actually. Um, we bought a little powerboat and we went out with our friends uh, and we had a day on the water yeah. on Sunday, which was great. That was healing and, for and, and we had a good soul. time. We had a really good time. It was, yeah. but it's like. We didn't need our own boat. We could have just went on their boat. Yeah. Right. But whatever. Regardless, that we really enjoyed our time. Right. And so I do find that you and I get a little bit like, um, I don't want to say recluse because we still are. We're doing a lot. Like we're oh, always doing you know, something. Fine. Yes. But like we're not like going to wine fest. Oh, fuck. No, we're not. Thank <laughs> God. <laughs> we're not we're not like uh, going out. We're not going out to eat a lot. No, like, but we do get in these zones of like, okay, we'll just work really hard until vacation. And then I remember I told yeah. you like Sunday made me be like, okay, we could enjoy our day-to-day -day life a little more. Like sure. we don't have to just work hard. Well, and you're then, speaking for yourself there. I do enjoy oh, my day-to-day -day life. Yeah, he, he golfs yeah. a lot. Yeah. I am just like head yeah. down, like work hard and like I'll breathe when I'm on vacation. Yeah. I'm like a shark. If I stop swimming, I die. <laughs> 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 yeah, so yeah. I'm like, we'll just make it to vacation. But then Sunday, I was like, okay, we can do things in between working. Yeah, stop by saying we in there because I'm very happy. I know so, you uh, are. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. but that is like a thing though, right? That's happening is that you're like, a lot of people get, you get so trapped in living in, a, in the future, right? Yeah. Working for That's the weekend, me. working for retirement, working for vacation. And then if you do that, you're pulling yourself out of the present moment. And then if you pull yourself out of the present moment, you're missing all the joy that exists in the yeah, present moment. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, you yeah. guys. Like, like, and the thing, I, the thing I love about doing podcasts, <laughs> yeah, the thing I love about doing podcasts though is that it forces people to remain present in a conversation, right? Yeah. And it's like, it very rarely happens anymore. I know, I just want to pick up my phone and start scrolling away right now. Yeah, <laughs> it's like literally, <laughs> it's so true, you know, it's like, so many, so many of us are never ha having an opportunity to have no. a, even you and I at home, it's like, we have battles over our phones. Not I know. battles. They're not battles, but it's But like, I just like to be scrolling and talking. You're like, you can't pay attention while you're doing that. And you cannot. No, I can't. And you know what's even worse? I think I can sometimes though. <laughs> but the thing is that's happening and like, uh, and we have to, you have to be with kids, like you have to be so careful is that I'm noticing because the phone has become so like, it's just so great at grabbing your attention now that if you're on the phone with somebody, you got them on speaker and you're scrolling, right? If you're having a conversation face to face, you're looking up a stat, you're saying, oh, let me show you this picture. Yeah. And every time that you do that, you're pulling yourself out of that present moment engagement that we used to have like just naturally all the time. And now we've been removed from that. And what it's creating is like this insane impatience at us mm -hmm. and all of us. Like, we can't right. wait for anything anymore. No. Yeah. I can't even imagine the days when you're driving down the 401 and you're like, I wonder how how tall that uh, windmill is. <laughs> and then you just don't know. <laughs> That's yeah. great. That's yeah. the fucking wildest thought. Now we're like, I wonder how tall that windmill is. How tall are windmills? And then I get it right away and I'm like, right. okay, I can enjoy yeah. this ride. And so, but what, you, what, we're, <laughs> what we're finding and all that's, all that's doing is increasing anxiety. And it's yeah. like, I just saw this post uh, of like, you know, and this is, we experience this with our friends too. It's like, hey, when can you get together? Oh, I can fit you in in three weeks, you know, for a three hour visit or a one hour visit or mm -hmm. whatever. And it's like, what's the fuck happened to like, just like someone calling you and say, hey, you want to hang out or just showing up at your house, right? And so we, we've completely removed ourselves and all we've done is added more to our schedules. Mm -hmm. we, we don't even have the time to have 
a cup of coffee with a friend if it's not scheduled three weeks out, which is just wild. Yeah. Right? And because of that, of all this stimulation, it's like, we're not even like, I was finding myself the other day pumping gas and I was impatient that the gas wasn't pumping fast enough. I was like, what the fuck is happening? And it's like, and it's like. And you're a patient guy. Imagine me. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so. I don't pump my own gas. <laughs> it's just like, you know, um, I think one of the things that would, uh, the things that we, if we could look to improve areas of our relationship would be like to be more present with each other. Yeah. Right. I know. And so the, the kids kind of force you in some ways to do that because if like, if you're scrolling through your phone and, and you're not paying attention to your kids, they'll be like, they'll let you know very quickly. <laughs> dad, <laughs> dad, 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 dad. Then you finally like put your phone down. Like, what do you want? <laughs> but it, they yeah. force you to, to, to engage with them. Right. Whereas adults and won't do that. They're too polite or whatever that may be. Right. Mm -hmm. They're not saying, Hey, like stop looking at your phone essentially. Yeah. But, but I think don't that's do that. why we go to like, we do activities because it forces us to be present. Like we go to the park because when we're at home, we're more scrolling yeah. or distracted, trying to cook dinner. But when we go to the park, all we have to do is focus on being at the park yeah. and pushing Harlow on the swing or doing whatever. So we get like exhausted doing all these activities because we're like nonstop, like going for walks, going to the park going to Harlow soccer, doing all this. But I feel like we do that because it forces us to like be in the present. At least it forces me to be in the present moment because yeah. I don't get like, I have, I enjoy spending time with the kids when that is the sole purpose of what we're doing. But if I'm at home trying to cook dinner and like hang out with them, I get frustrated yes. easily. But at the park, it's just like, there's nothing to be frustrated about. Push yeah, point. that is actually the one parenting tip so. that I, I don't give a lot of parenting tips, but the one parenting <laughs> tip that I give is that um, don't try and do anything else when you're hanging out with your kids. I know. Just don't try and do anything else. And it's like. But then we're like loading the dishwasher at 10 o'clock at night and it's. Yeah. I'm like, what it's is true. Happening? Yeah, you're right. That is true. But it's like. Um, I don't know how sustainable. If you are trying to, to send anything. a text message or an email while you're hanging out with your kids, you're going to get frustrated and you're going to take it out on them. So it's like, yeah, just try and be completely present with your kids and, and they will like, they'll feed off of that so much, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. it's, it's just so much better if you can be present with your kids. And I think that's one, one, one of the pieces of the puzzle that, you know, you and I are slowly finding a, we haven't figured out like a system or anything because mm -hmm. we don't usually do like that kind of stuff. We don't really have systems. No, we run a very loose ship. We were very loose it's ship. Yes. Real loosey goosey yeah. in the Haas house. <laughs> like <laughs> it is. I but I but I think that's also <laughs> like, you know, if I, I'm as I'm kind of like as we're kind of doing this podcast, I was kind of thinking like we have an easy relationship, mm -hmm. right? Like we like everyone says that relationships are hard, but we have neither of us have ever said that. Right. Mm -hmm. We've always been like, this is easy. So it's like if we're reflecting back, we've already kind of given some, but like what are some of the one of the or some of the really good things that we've done in our lives that have like led to our life being like our life and our relationship being like easier we reduced the fuck out of everything we own yes which oh oh it was so good oh. like we went on this oh. tear like a few a month oh, yeah. ago i don't know we just got rid of everything and now i open our drawers everything's like oh, empty. Yeah. I've never felt more alive. It's I wake a, up in the morning, I brush my teeth. I'm like, oh. Yeah, we literally made our, I mean, we're still, <laughs> we still have some rooms to work on. But, yeah. And some drawers to work on. But we made our, our house like kind of like a hotel in some sense. <laughs> there's like, nothing. There's nothing. Like, like we have, here? we have three pans, <laughs> two pots. It's true. Like we, we literally have, it not was like. so crazy. We I have, was like, are, is one of us going to talk the other out of this? And we were both like, no, this is great. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah, like we have nothing. Like we have, we. we well, we used to have like five spatulas. We, well, this is, a, this is a perfect what? example. We had um, a linen closet <laughs> that had so it was like we couldn't even close the door there were no, so many always sheets kind of open yeah it was always and that open. alone we reduced our stress just by closing that thing oh my god yeah that, <laughs> now i don't even see that every morning anyway so what we did was like well why do we need all of these sheets and so what we did was we have two sheets for every bed yeah which i mean when i say that out loud it seems so logical we just kept collecting sheets yeah we had so many freaking sheets <laughs> <laughs> but then we, then you would do that but, but that that mentality we then we had silverware it's like oh. we had 
18 different forks and 15 <laughs> spatulas and like you should acquire shit yes you do we yeah. like tupperware the tupperware situation was out of control oh yeah but no so i guess that would be like one tip oh would reduce be like, but that's what you always everything. say like oh, instead yeah. of adding things to your life you have to get rid of things and, it, and the, that the feeling oh. the lightness of it all yeah like we even went to the extreme of like it. We have uh, shower bins. <laughs> I don't know about. Oh, you don't want to share this? So oh, I'm too bad. It's coming out. So we have shower bins. So it's like I have a shower basket. It has there all my shower know. stuff in it. And so when I take a shower, I bring my shower basket in there and so, I use all the stuff. And then I bring it out and Brie brings hers in. So, so our, our shower, shower has nothing. Our shower has nothing. Not it's a not best. a container of soap. No. But when you a, look in there, you're just oh, like, Oh, you're wow. like, wow, this is great. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> See, like, that's where we're like, I like, I guess. <laughs> so, it's crazy. So, it's like kind of like. We're like in a dorm room. Like we're like, get our shower. Like, how do you bring your shower? It is very but much like that. We wake up in the morning because we have a big glass thing. So you could yeah. see in our shower and there's nothing. Not a fucking This is the stuff moldy. that gets us going. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, we're not lame. We're cool. We had an right. empty shower. Yeah. Okay. So then. So, anyway, reduce. Okay. So reduce. The yeah. second is we we do we do take that month long break every year. Now, I'm not yes. saying that. Now, everyone's saying I can't take a month long break. But well. Some people, you know, you can. Most people get two, three weeks vacation kind of thing. And so you could, if you wanted to, instead of doing a bunch of tiny little vacations, do one big long vacation. I don't even feel like we're on vacation until the second week of our vacation. Yes, yes. For sure. And so those short little vacations you usually end up needing a vacation from a vacation. Yeah. That's actually one of the reasons why Lungo Vida is so amazing is that when you go to Lungo Vida for two or three nights, you actually feel rested, right? Where Because you're not traveling yeah. too far. You're not getting on a plane usually. A short staycation is doable yes short vacation is my nightmare no yeah definitely not. and so yeah that's so right so we take one month minimum a year where we just kind of like step away from everything we still do a little bit of work but not like you, you don't very much do any work maybe okay. you're doing drawing and stuff though <laughs> right you're doing drawing sometimes <laughs> you're doing drawing and stuff like that shop. yeah but yeah. We basically take that one month where we're just we're just hanging out, yeah, and like there's not much to do, and it's such a reset. Golfing. It's such a reset for us. Like we come mm -hmm. home and we're like, we're ready to go. Yeah, charged up now, and then kind of reduced a little bit now with like the kids. Oh, yeah. yeah, but because it's like a lot of work on vacation with the kids. But having that was like, I think it's so important that break, mm -hmm. right? Where. It's you don't need a vacation from the vacation. We right. definitely don't feel like like when with the months up. Like, By the time it's we're done, like, we're so useless. Like we got to get to work. Like yes. this is crazy. So I think that's <laughs> we important. We can't live like this. So we found a way to step out of wanting of any materialistic stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. I've uh, been out of that. You've been out. I signed it up. We um we have some commonalities. Um, we've reduced all clutter in our house. Like which is a, such a freeing thing, which you wouldn't think is that big of a deal. We take <laughs> we take a break once a year. Mm -hmm. Right. We don't really do like, we're not really great at like date nights. No, but we don't like restaurants. <laughs> so. <laughs> I think part of the problem was we, I, you know, we spent so much time in the restaurant industry mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, we just kind of know the interworkings of it all. And I think it's hard for us to step out of that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think that's one thing that we could probably get better at is like. Enjoying restaurants? Well, like, no, like. Oh God. Finding the joy in going to the wine fest that's a tough sell no okay finding the joy in going to a restaurant i don't know <laughs> if i can find it but i will that make that a point to look for that joy yeah because like i think something like we, we we all went out uh, <laughs> after our big loss at lugo Vida. that was fun we had a great time right yeah. and so maybe it's Do not so much about, about the loss? restaurant as it is the the people uh, that you're with kind of thing, right? Yeah. I enjoy having our friends over to our house way more than going to a restaurant. Definitely. And like, well, that's I, actually another thing. We really enjoy having like hangouts at our house. We do. And that's yeah. actually another thing that we did kind of unintentionally at our old house was we set up what we call the circle of trust. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we oh, this is another that. another tip that we do. We never have a TV on ever. Oh, yeah. The only time we watch TV is... I will take credit for that. You wanted a TV in that front room. I said, right. no way. Right. Yes. So if we... we Not that we don't watch TV, but if we do, we watch TV. Yeah. Like, like we're, we're only watching TV to watch a movie. Yeah, we're we, not just having shows on in never. the background. I can't right. imagine. But we have this front entrance room in our house. And whenever people come over, we hang out there and the best conversations happen. Yes. And it's for sure because the TV's not on. 100%. Like, it's... I don't... 
know many houses where everyone just sits like in a sitting room and just it's literally that's what it is out. it's like a sitting room it's like a lobby it is a lobby of like a hotel <laughs> of our house. Right. And, and we all just hang out all the time and like on thursday nights my cousin comes over and like my aunt and uncle come over and we all just sit around and hang out like it's yeah. it's the best and that would for sure never ha- it doesn't even happen when we go to their house because they have the tv on yeah that we so that's a big that. one and then i guess that, that leads into another one is that yeah, we have also. like um we have a lot of like not a lot of family but we have we have good connections with our family mm-hmm. right and that, and that is actually you a big you one yeah you're like really good at like staying in, connected with people I recognize that, that one- texting I do when I'm on my phone. You're like, get off your phone. I'm connecting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> but she's good at like keeping in communication with people. Whereas part of m- one of my like, you know, survival patterns or like, you know, protections that I put up is like kind of like isolation. You know, I know I, I noticed that like mm-hmm. when, you know, like I'll just like keep retracting from everybody, you yeah. know, until I kind of like essentially disappear. But you kind of like reappeared Bring me back. <laughs> <laughs> like Bree is like in communication with my family more than I am yes like setting up the hangouts and making sure that our kids are hanging out with their kids and and all that stuff so yeah, yeah. And that, that, that's the Italian in you they do have that figured out they don't the Italians they don't got a lot but they got the food and the family <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, that's definitely, something. That's definitely. not nothing. So let, let's ask the this Germans. as we're getting as we're. I think another thing that people would, <laughs> and people probably aren't even interested because we are an important. But like, uh, um, you know how do how do you feel that we are managing, like kind of what we're doing? Oh, not very good. <laughs> 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 because what, what, did you think well, I was what we're say? doing you think we're is doing good? no, no, I don't. I don't oh, okay. I, I, um, it's crazy because Brie is like obviously in, insanely busy, and she's working. You know, not, she she has a long work schedule because she works all day tattooing. Which yeah, you gotta get out of here. I know because uh, <laughs> well, uh, we have to be home by four to get our kids. Um, she works all day tattooing, and then she, and then from there she uh, has to draw at night every night. Mm-hmm. She draws for like two hours. So, and then I'm, I'm, you know, uh, running Lingo Vita, I have my coaching clients. And so it's like, we're busy. Yeah. And so I think one of the things that we haven't done a great job of is. Work-life balance. Yeah. Like I think we're working too much. Yeah. Is what I feel. Like I feel like we're working way too much. I know. Sometimes, right. that's, this is going to be bad, but whatever. I like lust after like factory workers, like clocking in, clocking out. I'm like, whoa, they're living. That's yeah. where I think. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm being so serious. I like the idea of clocking out of a job and never thinking about it again is like, I can't even think of anything better than that. We can't really. Well, I can think of a lot of things better than that. But anyways. Really? Yeah. Oh. Like well, freedom. we go to restaurants. We don't even, we're like, we're looking at the menu. We're looking at the decor. We're looking at like yeah. how they sat us. Like we can't even enjoy anything. We go to hotels, can't enjoy anything because of Lingo Vita. Yeah, because you kind of crazy. always have, We're yeah. like trying to get ideas, try, like yeah. assessing like, oh, how'd they do that? Yeah, we're like, kind of in it. And we're once we're, just, we're yeah, balls yeah. deep. But that's also what allows us to connect as well. Like we yeah. like creativity. We like we, do. we like coming up with creative ideas and, you know, we like talking about it. So right. maybe, maybe you know, what we could do, one of the things that we've learned from being able to have this conversation is like, we should just, instead of like resisting it, we should lean into it more and be like, hey. I, we can lean into it more if we tried. We're <laughs> in it. We're yeah. like, that's yeah. all we talk about. Okay. Well, you have to leave, but okay. let's just end it on this. Where, where are we headed as like a family, as like a couple, you know, like what's, what's, Texas. what's next on the, go. on the, <laughs> on the Haas family agenda? Like where do, where do you see us in five years? I don't know. I always go back and forth between homeschooling, which I like, I don't know. I yeah. feel like we're going to reassess that once Harlow gets into grade one yeah. and I'm reducing my hours. Mm. So we'll see how that goes for me. Yeah. And I, I eventually would like to, like, I really love working with you. Like when mm. you and I like work together and yeah. come up with business ideas, like I would like to do more things yeah. that we get to do together, but I don't know what that would look like. Maybe me doing more graphic shit. for. Lindsay. Well, yeah, I kind of, like, I, I mean, know. I've always seen like, you know, yeah. us in some capacity working together and I have 
I have Sober Retriever. That's, you know, we're going to be coming mm -hmm. as soon as I have the time and energy to put it to it. Yeah. I also see Lungo Vita becoming like, you know, just gigantic. Yeah. Right. And with respect to what we do and what we offer. And, you know, we got Maya here. That's going to like be a huge part of that role. Um, so I definitely do see us coming together in some ways. And then also, but just being super cautious that we don't just add more. Right. Right. We want to create, yeah. we want to create the life that we want. And I think a lot of people don't take the time because we, we, we're, we're the victims of our own, our own thing. We never, <laughs> we just, we just like, we went out and we created, we never really stopped to say like, well, what exactly are we creating? And now we're just in that okay. creation and we're yeah. like, oh fuck, we're working way too much. Yeah. Right? And so I think the next evolution for us will be to get really intentional about what we create and how that's going to affect our lives mm -hmm. so that we can have like that work life balance where we feel like we're not working too much, uh, but we are enjoying everything that we're doing and that when we come home, we don't feel exhausted when we're right. with the kids and all that. We want our next things to be not a time for money. No thing. time for, no time because for Because that, well, your your business isn't so much, the coaching business is time for money, yeah. but Lungo Vita isn't, but I'm yeah. only making money when I'm working, which I guess sounds kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> people are like, no you, shit, you. asshole, but. <laughs> you you like, privileged <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just canceled myself, but yeah. I would like <laughs> <laughs> to have a business that runs itself in some yeah. capacity. Obviously, I want to be working, but like when we go on vacation for a month, Lungo Vita is still bringing in income. Whereas if I take a month off, I am not making money. Yeah. And that that's that is for sure your next evolution. Yeah, some and whether that's with you, with me, or you doing your own thing, we have yeah. we have a bunch of ideas for your own thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I that's think what's next. We want to take a step back from run, at least from running day to day stuff in our business. Yeah. And like, I think that would be the next step for us and enjoying our day to day life more instead of doing day to day business stuff. Yep. You know, All right. So We're going to leave it at that. Cause we got to go get the kids. I it's me. Yeah. Yeah. You he's yeah. saying <laughs> <laughs> anyways, Brie Haas tattoos, most famous tattoo artist in the world. <laughs> you can follow her on Instagram. Like, where is he going with uh, this? Yeah. Um, but, but don't book with me. Um, um, and then I have no idea if you, you guys are going to find this podcast entertaining or not, but I thought it was fun. So that's all I really care about. Thanks. Thanks for coming on. Okay, bye. <laughs> all right, bye. Uh, that's all, guys. If you enjoyed the podcast, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you again next Sunday.